That's all right. After printing out all my templates, I simply used the markings on the page to line up the pieces that were too big to fit on one page and tape them together. Over at the chop saw, I get a piece of 2x10, and I'm going to just plane this down to 1 inch on all sides. I then lay out the two biggest triangles on this board, as the bigger triangle will be 1 inch thick, and the smaller one will be cut off on the side, and then run through the planer and thickness down to 7 eighths of an inch. Now in preparation for gluing on the templates to the pieces of wood, I simply cut away most of the excess, making sure to leave the line, which will be sanded to in the end. I lay out the biggest triangle, and it's actually taller than the 2x10, so I'm going to be cutting off a piece of scrap on the side and flipping it and gluing it on top. This way I'm not wasting any of the extra wood that would be cut off anyways, and this will get the full length of the triangle. This is simply put in some clamps and glued up, and it should be plenty strong. So in order to attach the templates, I'm using some spray adhesive, which you spray on both sides and let cure for about 5 minutes before sticking together and it should hold really well. Now in order to avoid sanding as much and get a clean cut, I'm using my miter saw on all these different angles, lining it up with my laser, getting as close to the line as I can, and any other cut that can't be made on the miter saw safely, I'll bring over to the bandsaw and will have to be sanded flush after it's cut on the bandsaw. Now the tips of the mountains, or the snowy parts of the mountain, are interlocked very tightly as to not waste very much material. This is 8th inch hardboard and it's not very expensive at all anyways, so if you wanted you could spread these out a lot more to make things easier. Once the tips are all cut on the bandsaw, I use the disc sander to flush up all the outside edges and the inside edges I bring over to my 1 inch strip sander. This works great and you can really get a crisp corner on the inside. The most important thing to do before removing the template is to mark the location with a center punch of all four holes. Now that the glue up is complete on the biggest triangle I can take the clamps off and start removing some of the excess glue with a chisel. I then use some spray adhesive to attach the template, making sure to come back with the center punch and mark my hole locations again in this big triangle piece. Now it's over to the bandsaw to cut everything to final size, and then bring it over to the belt sander and flush up the edges and make it nice and smooth. After the final template is removed, I take all the pieces and sand them up to 180 grit. Next I drill four pocket holes on the smaller mountain piece in the middle, and the one on the end will get two pocket holes to attach it to the larger triangle. This will help with strength as a lot of this will be end grain to end grain construction. In order to keep all the pieces coplanar on the back, I put the pieces near the edge so I can access the pocket holes from underneath to attach them. In order to attach the last piece, I shoved a piece of hardboard underneath and simply drilled in the pocket screws from the back. I can then lay out the frosty tips of the mountain made of hardboard on top to make sure that they're all the right size. Now that they look good, I can go back, remove the pocket screws, add glue, and put the screws back in to act as clamps for the glue. I attach a scrap piece of wood on the front of my drill press table. This is going to allow me to drill the four holes for the 5 8 inch dowels which act as hooks for the coat rack. This will ensure that all four hooks are on the same angle and keep all the coats on the hooks.
Next, over at the bandsaw, I cut up the 5 8 inch dowel into four 3 inch strips, which will then be brought over to the sander in order to smooth the ends and give them a slight round over. So the body of the coat rack receives a dark chocolate stain, and the tops, which are supposed to be the snow, get spray painted white. And now you'll see that my spray paint, I think because it was negative 40 that day, didn't really work. So I brought it inside to use some primer on instead. Now that the stain is fully dry, I can add a little bit of glue to each hole, and using a Q-tip, I spread it around so there's even coverage. Each hole receives a dowel and sits there to dry. In order to fasten the snowy mountain tips down to the body of the coat rack, I simply use a small amount of glue spread out with my finger as we don't want any squeeze out on this. Now this next part is optional, but I think it looks better this way. So I masked off the areas where the snowy tips were, and I painted the stained piece behind it as well to match. In order to finish this project, I added one coat of water-based polyurethane to the back of the project and then the front. Now you can mount this coat rack however you please, but I chose to simply drive two screws through the front into the studs as I want this to be as secure as possible. And with those last two three inch screws going into the studs and through the coat rack, it's time to get the clients involved and give it a test run. My snow coat?